Hey guys, welcome to the shop on a hot California July evening. Yeah, it's been really hot. I haven't filmed much in a little bit. I got some projects going on that I'm going to share with you shortly. Um, but I decided to make this episode based on some questions I had uh, coming in through the email about necks and especially about dimensions of necks. So I'm going to answer a few of those questions, how long necks are, um, how wide the fingerboards are, um, string spacing and things like that. Hey, that music going on in the background, I want to give you a tip about this. This is a CD called Giants of Hill Country Blues, Volume 1, 1927 to 1938. Um, I really like this CD. Um, you're going to find on there that the person that uh, Sun House heard playing slide guitar for the first time, a guy named Rube Lacey is on there. And then you've got Willie Brown who played with Sun House. They ran around together. Um, and, um, and then there's a lot on here by Sun House. So I'm going to give you a link to this uh, at the end of the video. Yeah, so in fact, I'm going to be building a Sunhouse guitar, Sunhouse themed guitar. I've got the stuff uh, coming in, in bits and pieces, the matchbooks and a couple other surprises for you. Um, but I'm going to do an episode on that. So that's brewing. I also am going to do a, an episode about wireless pickups. I want to tell you about something I've discovered there and how that will work for you. Uh, right now, I've got a coffee can guitar on the bench. We're going to see that in this episode when we're talking about neck dimensions. All right, I am in the middle of building another coffee can guitar. I've got an episode that shows you how to build one start to finish, and I'll put a link for, for that up. You'll see an eye popping up on the upper part of your screen there. If you click on that eye during the video or at the end of it, you're going to see some... Uh, links to other stuff that might interest you anyway um what i've got here is i've got the neck um on it and fretted um i've cut the scarf joint in um i have yet to drill the holes for the tuners uh but um right now what i'm doing is i'm putting the second board through the holes in the can there i'm going to cut this at an angle here and round this off but um and then I'll cut the length off to about here. But yeah, this is what I'm doing right now. Okay, so let's slide this um, coffee can project out of the way and give ourselves a little room here. I want to start off by uh, talking about the size of the stock I use. There was a question about that. How, how wide is stuff? So uh, again, we're going to have a look at this. We've got uh, the headstock, uh, a scarf joint cut here. Uh, into the neck board and then we got a, a finger board here so um, let's start there so uh, in the United States they'll sell you stuff it's kind of odd we we go by inches over here but they'll sell you something they'll say this is a three inch board now uh, this board is actually two and a half inches and of course I like to use the metric system um, to measure things out so it, it gives me something uh, more exact so I've got a ruler here I've got a couple of them uh, that have uh, both the English inch system and and the metric system so I use these a lot so the good part about this and I've mentioned this before if I start using inches I'm gonna be like let me see if I want to find the middle of this or find out how wide it is or something and and it falls between the marks I'm trying to figure out 64 fourths and sixteenths and all that kind of thing and it's a mess where if I'm using the metric side of it I just put it up to the edge and I find out this is about 64 so it was really easy to figure out so if you're over there in a place where they use this, the stock that I use for the uh, head stock is about 64 millimeters wide or 6.4 centimeters is what that would be. And then I've got a, a, a an episode I did called um, Scarf Joint and it tells you how you would measure this and, 
and lay an angle on it to cut so so we end up with uh, the neck but again that is um, in the United States two and a half inches in the rest of the world 64 millimeters now the neck material um, again they're gonna tell you it's two inch stock well it's really an inch and a half and it's about 38 millimeters or 3.8 centimeters so 38 millimeters so uh, this is is how this works and I buy this section in four foot sections um, and I can buy this again in four foot sections now the fingerboards that go on top of this are about the same uh, width so again um, in the United States I call it an inch and a, or two inch it's actually more a little bit more than an inch and a half but about 38 millimeters or 3.8 centimeters so when this is glued on top of this after everything's flattened out then we end up with uh, a tad sticking over so we dress that and and grind it down now the last dimensions I want to talk about on uh, both the headstock uh, wood and the uh, neck board are as well as the fingerboard we'll talk about that a little bit is thickness how it comes out of the store so when I buy a piece of this in a four foot section or whatever it's going to come stock about three quarters of an inch they're going to tell you it's inch material but it's about three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters now when it comes to the headstock if you look at the different tuners I did an episode about tuners look for the link to that showing up but you can see that that barely clears uh, the string hole so I'm gonna have to work this down so the headstock material you're gonna have to plane it down or sand it down a bit for for this to work with either this configuration or this configuration you can see it's just a little thick for that now when it comes to the neck board itself it's the same thing they'll tell you it's an inch thick but it's actually three quarters or 19 millimeters finally the fingerboards once they're worked over and everything let's get something that we can measure this with end up being about nine millimeters thick so there you go on thickness Another question I had is how long do we want the neck to be so um, is there a limit so we're talking about from here the tip of the headstock all the way down past the bridge and to the end however we end that either it'll end up at the end of a box or the way I do it with this tail piece sticking out there's a couple of things to think about first your your scale uh, it is going to have a lot to do with this as well as how much of the uh, headstock you want sticking out so the scale on most of my guitars is 25 and a half so I would have that mark right there and then I want a little bit past there sticking out so I can anchor my strings here and you know how I I do that we've seen this before where I ground the strings with copper tape and and use these tension pins and drill those through here but how long do we want this to be well I'll tell you what this is kind of funny but when I measure this I really don't want this to be any more than I really need to be a little less than three feet or a tad less than 90 centimeters okay because um, a couple of things first off if you're gonna ship these um, you'll find out that in the United States then anything over 36 inches starts to be a problem getting boxes um, the dimensions the shipping dimensions that's kind of the limit so I like to make sure that right here is less than uh, 36 inches um, another oddball thing is if you're going to enter this in the fair that I enter and yeah I think you've seen this before I do okay with my stuff out here at the fair I usually win some kind of rib and put my guitars or amps in but at the end of the day they don't want anything longer than 36 inches without prior permission so um, that's kind of an obtuse reason but again tip of the headstock 
down to the tail piece. I don't like them to be, I like them to be less than 36 inches if possible. All right, the final question I had was from my friend Andy Dobbs, who's south of me a bit, about string spacing at the knot. So let's start this off by looking at this gem right here. I think you all have seen this before. Um, it's an old airline arch top that I put uh, pickups on. And look at this custom Wisconsin pit guard license plate. But... The question is, is right here, what is the spacing of these strings at uh, the knot at the top of the neck? Now, I know this is a six string, but we'll use it as an example to take a look at uh, when it comes to cigar boxes. Okay, right-handed guitar, um, six strings, heavy string over here, lightest string here. Now, if we measure this, we're going to see that the overall neck width is about 42 millimeters or 4.2 centimeters so uh, what's happened here is coming off the edge so this is the edge of the fingerboard to the first string here and also the edge of the fingerboard to the first string here and I'm talking about the center of the string so we would measure from the edge of the fingerboard to the center of the string and that's looking to be about four millimeters off of the edge and we come over here and do the same thing so we're at the center of the string to the edge of the fingerboard and it's about four so on this guitar they've started off coming in off of both edges four millimeters that's four millimeters and then when you start taking a look at the space string center to string center this one is seven 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 and seven so the string spacing on the standard guitar six string is off that edge four millimeters this edge four millimeters and then seven apart now first let's look at a couple different kinds of setups here uh, this one I'm working on right now this uh, butternut coffee can guitar is going to be a three string and it's got a configuration where uh, this wood is notched out and I'm going to use this bolt with acorn nuts to be my a knot and then I'll tighten uh, these up to keep it stable on the neck and it'll stick up just enough it fits down in here I've had good luck with that so that's one type of configuration of knot now the threads on here once you get things figured out as to where you want them you don't want to leave this like this because threads are meant to rotate a knot so if you have a, a string on there and you're plucking it you're going to find out that these threads actually become your enemy because it'll jump and and the pitch of them is actually going to want your strings are going to want to move so once you know where your spacing is you can uh, file and i've talked about knots in a video so the second configuration is this type in which you're using a bone or a piece of wood or something like that and mounting it there with glue but again the uh, grooves are not cut here so these are the two types of things you're likely to see okay let's take a look at a three stringer first you're familiar with this one it was the coffee can guitar i built that was in an episode it's got the nut here and i purposely haven't filed these down yet these grooves in here but let's take a look at the string spacing you want to remember that the neck on a four string and a three string are virtually the same width so what's going to change is possibly the uh, measurement from the edge to the first uh, string and the top string as well as the spacing in between okay so to see what we're starting with here the neck is about 38 millimeters wide meaning the center of the neck is at 19 or, or the fingerboard excuse me so we're talking fingerboard so it's about 19 if you look while we're here um, that center string is right at 19 but 38 overall so uh, what I did was I came off it's about seven millimeters to the uh, uh, edge to the first string and then over here it's about the same thing and then as you look 
there's about seven millimeters in between a string center to center. Now, if that's working for me and I've played uh, and been doing okay with that spacing and I like it, um, then it's time to finalize this, which I can do by marking the top of this knot with a uh, Sharpie. And then when I loosen the strings up, what's going to happen is there's going to be a blank spot where the string was between the Sharpie mark here and here. Once the string is loosened up, I can pull this off to the side. Then I can take this file, which is triangular shaped, and file this down where the missing uh, Sharpie is, and it'll tell me exactly where I need to be. But you want to play a little bit and make sure that this is right. Now, when you're filing bridges, this triangular file doesn't work so well. One that's more flat shaped or rounded is better because uh, the strings, especially the wider strings, will get trapped halfway between the groove and not reach the bottom and then you get string buzz out of that but this triangular file works good to finalize your mark so measure off the edges measure between the strings put the center string on a three string right in the center and then adjust it as you find it comfortable to play it and then finalize it okay here's one of my favorite four strings that i've made it came back home the artist got a different one this has been an episode um, called why I do this is a little clip of the artist playing it uh, but anyway it's a four string so let's look at the same type of uh, issues here now again I'll point out that the even though it's got four strings instead of three the width of the fingerboard is the same it's about 38 millimeters and so finding the center uh, again is 19 but that doesn't help you space in the strings so what I've done is I've come in and this is about six millimeters off the edge. Um, this one as well. And then the space between the four strings is right at seven. You see that? So again, it's just a matter of what you like to play. I can conceivably uh, think of people playing finger style where this bass string would be up here and then these would be closer together because you've got somebody thumping this constantly like so and playing the other string. So it's a matter of what makes you comfortable. But again, don't file these. Once you get them filed, you can take this marker, draw a line like this. When you loosen your strings off, there won't be a mark where the string was and then you just file. Of course, as you get heavier strings, the more you cut down, it's actually going to take more uh, of a cut down or a file down for the lighter string to get closer to the fret than the heavier string. But that's basically it. There's no rocket science to this. There's going to be other opinions because remember, I don't even play guitar, but this is how I do it. And the artists that I get these things to seem to think it's okay. So there you go. All right, there it is. I hope I've given you something to think about uh, when you're cutting your necks, when you're shipping them, uh, when you're laying the strings out and that type of thing. So uh, I'll close this episode by reminding you, you really want to check out uh, Giants of Hill Country Blues, Volume 1, uh, 1927 and 1938. You've got Sun House going on right there um, with one of his trademark songs that was first put out in about 1930 on, on uh, a record. Anyway, uh, don't forget at the end here in a minute, there's going to be uh, the subscribe button popping up in the middle. And then you've got a couple of playlists on either side of that. So I appreciate your support and I'll see you soon.